Thank you so much, Janet. Friends, our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. And this is the story again of the commissioning of the disciples. Hear now God's word to us. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the way you revealed yourself to the disciples after the resurrection and the way you met them on that mountain and gave them that great commission to go and spread your good news to the world. As we reflect on this message, help us to live it out as well. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This morning, as I mentioned, we are exploring the story of Jesus commanding the disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. And again, this is known within church history as the Great Commission. Commission is another word for command or instruction. I have always connected the story of the Great Commission to world missions. I grew up in churches that would remind us to spread the message of Jesus to the world. When I attended seminary, I chose Fuller Theological Seminary because it was known as a place devoted to world missions. I graduated with my Master of Divinity degree from Fuller in 2002 and included in my degree many world mission courses for my electives. I also was blessed at Fuller to meet missionaries and ministers from many different nations, including countries like Korea, China, the Philippines, Japan, Kenya, the Congo, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Liberia, Mexico, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Egypt, India, France, Germany, England, Spain, and I could keep going. There were over 70 nations represented in the student body when I was a student there. So when I think of the Great Commission, I first think of spreading the message of Jesus to the world. Let us now take a look at the story from Matthew's Gospel and highlight a few key things. First, remember the context. Jesus is meeting with the 11 disciples since Judas is no longer with them. And it is after the resurrection and right before Jesus' ascension into heaven. He meets with them on a mountain. And that's important to realize because, especially for Matthew's gospel, Matthew wants us to remember that Jesus is like the second Moses. And so remember Moses would meet with people And uh, by the mountain, Mount Sinai, and Moses went up to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. So when Jesus goes to the mountain, everybody's thinking about Moses as well and how Jesus is like the second Moses. So the disciples then see Jesus on the mountain, and they worship him. This especially shows that Jesus is viewed by the disciples as the Son of God, as one with God. We also notice, though, that as they see Jesus, some doubt. And scholars debate what this means. Why why would they doubt since Jesus has revealed himself and been resurrected? But the idea that some of them experience doubt might encourage those of us who struggle with doubt as part of our faith journey. And so today I want to remind you that it's okay to doubt even as you experience worshiping Jesus. That's part of our faith journey as we work through our emotions as we work through our questions. So this is a reminder that it's okay to doubt during your faith journey experience. Jesus then comes and says to them, 
All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Jesus did not just tell his disciples only to share about him with others. Jesus wants them to make disciples. They are called to reproduce themselves. Disciples are students of a rabbi or teacher, and the original disciples are called to go and help raise up other friends and followers of Jesus. As they make disciples, they are to teach people to obey Jesus' commands. Jesus also makes it clear that the disciples are to continue the ministry of baptism that Jesus himself experienced from John the Baptist. And as the disciples baptize, they are to use what we would call Trinitarian language, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You may notice when I baptize people at this church, I also baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The last message from Jesus, according to Matthew's gospel, is one that brought great comfort to the original disciples and the early church and brings comfort to all of us. Jesus reminds his friends that he will be with them always, even to the end of the age. In other words, Jesus says, I will always be with you. So find great comfort in that truth. We can see how the story of the Great Commission inspires world mission today and reminds us of God's love for the world. But before I talk more about the beauty of this message from Jesus, I want to share that the Great Commission also was used by the church, sadly, especially during the period of colonization, to cause great harm. As a reminder, colonization was the movement of largely European nations to expand their ownership of land throughout the world. As we remember from our history classes, between the 1500s until the 1960s, almost the entire world was colonized by European countries. The United States, of course, also spread its own control over much of North America and its influence in other nations around the world, often displacing native people as it gathered up land. The sad reality, as Europe and the United States developed its land and influence, they often combined harmful colonizing actions like using military power to take over land while forcing conversion to Christianity and requiring indigenous people groups to be baptized. Unfortunately, for many nations in the Southern Hemisphere especially, the idea of the Great Com Commission brings up a painful history of colonization. One of the problems with some approaches to the spread of Christianity from the 1500s into today is that Christian missionaries have sometimes assumed that they are bringing Christ to another nation instead of recognizing that God is already active everywhere in the world before a missionary arrives. Consider the thoughts of African religious scholar John Mabiti from Kenya, who wrote, The God described in the Bible is none other than the God who is already known in the framework of our traditional African religiosity. The missionaries who introduced the gospel to Africa in the past 200 years did not bring God to our continent. Instead, God brought them. John Mabiti helps us understand that when Christians from Europe went to other countries to spread the message of the gospel of Jesus, they often made the mistake of thinking that they were the only ones that had a relationship with God. Instead, Mabiti reminds European missionaries that just as the Jewish people had a relationship with God before Jesus arrived and Christianity eventually developed into a new religion, so did African indigenous religions have connection to God that then became shaped by the coming of the good news of Jesus. What does this mean then for us Christians today who seek to spread the message of God's love to the world revealed in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus? Well, as your pastor, I certainly support the spreading of the gospel of Jesus to the world. I think it is a good idea to make disciples of Jesus in all nations of the world. However, I think making disciples needs to be done differently now than some models in the past. First, as Christians, we need to share our faith with humility and with less judgment of other faiths. As an example, our mission partner, Talile Fikru, and her husband, Urgesa, 
do mission work in Ethiopia by helping start schools for mostly Muslim students. In these schools, they choose to not teach the Christian faith in order to show respect to the wishes of the Muslim families they serve. Instead, they build relationships in the community, and by building trust, they have opportunities to share about Jesus in other contexts. Sometimes this leads to people becoming disciples of Jesus, but they do not force anyone to leave their religion, and they show respect to Muslims. I have shared before with you that when I was growing up in San Diego, my family was very close to a Muslim family in our town, and we respected and supported each other's faith traditions. Maybe it sounds surprising to some perspectives within Christianity, but we can show respect to people of other faiths while still sharing our faith. We do not need to force conversion. We just can be ourselves and trust God is active in our world. A second approach to the Great Commission today is to recognize that any actions of love in the world support the mission of Jesus Christ. Sharing our story of who Jesus is in our lives is one way we can live out the Great Commission. But any time we show love in this world, we are supporting the mission of Jesus Christ. Christian author and minister Brian McLaren says this about the Great Commission. I believe in and am committed to the Great Commission. I would define it as making disciples of Jesus or learners of the way of Jesus by proclaiming his good news of the commonwealth of God. McLaren then continues, I believe the way of Jesus, the way of love, faith, hope, reconciliation, radical rethinking, service, self-giving, respect for creation, full surrender to the Spirit, truly is the way, the truth, and the life. I like how McLaren highlights that respect for creation can be a way to live the great commission of God's love. You may remember that on April 22nd, just this last week, we celebrated Earth Day. Earth Day reminds us to care for all of God's creation and to work for environmental justice efforts, like reduction of greenhouse gases and other tangible efforts to reduce the impact of climate change. Last week, after the verdict in the death of George Floyd, we continued to hear members of the black community describe how racial justice and a willingness to address the problem of systemic racism in society is also a strong witness to the mission of God in our world. I think the work of social justice, environmental justice, and any actions of compassion are an expression of the mission of Christ. And when our civil servants, including nurses, doctors, police officers, firefighters, social workers, legislators, and educators, serve the needs of our communities, they are fulfilling the work of God in the world. Friends, the good news is that we can all live out the great commission of Jesus in the world by doing the actions of Jesus. Richard Rohr, the Franciscan priest and founder of Center for Action and Contemplation, encourages Christians to let go of doing service out of a need for ego. In a recent podcast interview on rethinking the Great Commission, Richard Rohr shared that when he entered the priesthood, he he hoped to go out and in the name of Christ to save the world. What he and other priests learned as they ministered to people in other nations, though, is that they met God in the people they served. They thought they were the givers, but learned that God was already there, and they became the receivers. Like Rohr is saying, let us live our faith with a similar humility. Rather than acting like the superior ones seeking to save the world, remember that's Jesus' job, let us humbly do actions of service and help make disciples of Jesus by honoring the work of God wherever love is being displayed. If we act with humility and compassion, the world might see Christians less as the colonizers and more as the humble friends of Jesus who are peacemakers and partners in God's work of reconciliation and justice. Christians need to be defined more by what we support than by what we judge. We need to be known for our kindness and humility more than for our hatred and pride. 
Some of you have read an article recently put out with a poll from Gallup about decline in attendance in houses of worship. According to Gallup, Americans' membership in houses of worship continued to decline last year, dropping below 50% for the first time in Gallup's eight-decade trend. In 2020, 47% of Americans said they belonged to a church, synagogue, or mosque, down from 50% in 2018 and 70% in 1999. I think this statistic calls us more than ever to live out our faith with humility and compassion and to show our faith by actions of love rather than judgment. The younger generation that is pulling back from attending houses of worship is still open to faith, but they are looking for spiritual communities that inspire them to know a God who is good and loving. So I hear you saying from home, yes, I want to be a Christian that can embody the Great Commission in a new way of humility and compassion. How do I start? Start small. Start by listening to the world around you with an ear to learn from others, especially to learn from cultures, faiths, and perspectives different from your own. Start by recognizing that God is active all around you and within you. Your mission field begins in your home. For some, it begins in your school. For some, in your workplace. Simple actions of love are the first step in living out the Great Commission. Then, as you show love, remember you are embodying the love of Jesus. When appropriate, share with others how your faith in Jesus inspires your kindness and compassion, your care for all of God's creation. As we do these things, we will fulfill the great commission of God's love. Will you pray with me? Jesus, we again are so grateful for you, for your love for us, for the way you embodied that love, Jesus, and the way you cared for people on earth. And we want to live out your love in this world. So help us fulfill the great commission. Help us to engage in relationship with people who are different from us, who we need to learn from. Help us do this with humility, with compassion, with an openness to learn, and with an openness to share about our own faith in you, Jesus. We pray this in your mighty name. Amen.